Hi everybody, it's Meredith. And Damien. Good morning. We're going to take you for a little flight today to demonstrate some maneuvers that you practice during your training. Let's have fun. It's going to be awesome. Eight is information, Foxtrot, time 1353 Zulu, wind calm, weather better than 5005. Temperature 22, dew point 17, altimeter 3012. Visual approach, runway 32 in use. VFR departures advise ground control of the initial direction of flight. If the direction of flight is northbound, remain clear of the Clash Charlie airspace. Arcana Jack's approach on frequency 124.9er. Advise initial contact, to information, Foxtrot. Craig, round Cessna 99725 at Craig Air Center with information. Foxtrot, ready to taxi to active for a VFR departure to the north. Cessna 99725, Craig, ground, runway 32, taxi via Alpha Charlie. Runway 32 via Alpha and Charlie, 99725. Looks like there's a jet taxiing in, so we'll wait for them. Traffic ahead of you, yep, thing. always it's important to check to left, right, on. and center before you start moving. Traffic, four, whiskey. What's that t-shirt, Damien? I love the smell of jet fuel in the morning. Oh, yeah. We just got to whiff through the vents. Oh, uh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Better than coffee. So we're holding short of runway 32 here, and worth noting for folks that may be unfamiliar with this airport, we're lined up with uh, taxiway Charlie, but we also have the option of departing uh, from taxiway Echo, which is right here. Often Craig Tower to expedite the flow will tell you to make the left turn on Echo for departure, but if they don't say anything, you want all available runway, so you'll go straight ahead and use Charlie. Approach, touch and go. Action 322, clear touch and go, short approach approved. Clear touch and go, 32, short approach approved. Connection 332. Thank you, Cessna. Was that 99725? You ready to go? 99725 is ready to go. Says 99725, left turn there, use Echo, 32 at Echo, clear for takeoff. 32 at Echo, clear for takeoff, 99725. Says 86 Victor, left turn on Alpha, back to runway 32. Left turn on Alpha, uh, back to 32. All right, so as we roll out onto the runway, notice that same level pitch attitude we had on the taxiway. As you roll out onto the runway, you want to take a snapshot of that in your mind of what that looks like. So Damien's accelerating for takeoff now. Engine instruments are good. Airspeed is alive. Right now, we're right about 50 knots. He's got that nose wheel nice and light. And we've lifted off. Notice how it was just a very slight pitch up. And that nose right on the horizon or slightly above it is going to give you uh, that VX, uh, excuse me, that VY pitch attitude. In most of these airplanes, you'll find also that, especially for you folks that are learning IFR flying, BY is going to be about 10 degrees pitch up, and notice within a few knots, that's right where he's at right now. I'm going to pan back a little bit so you can Please see what that, that looks like out the window. Right, here's your horizon. Uh, 9387 hotels. Here's the top of your instrument panel. So notice where your nose is for BY. Well, I'll get that off. I really screw it back to you. Hold on short, 875. That's giving us today about seven, 800 feet a minute, not too shabby. But that's going to vary depending on the airplane, depending on flight conditions. Now when Damien's ready here, let's pitch up just a little more and show what VX looks like, just for a moment. Pitching up to a VX climb. So notice how it's substantially more than VY. Look how the wing is in relation to the natural horizon. If you look left and right, that's about VX here in the Cessna 172. All right.
right, so here's straight and level. We're going to pitch up and assume a VY climb attitude. Just a nice normal climb. And we're going to continue. Yeah, there's VY right about there. Then we're going to bring it up a little bit to VX. And then sneak it up just a little more so you can see what an excessive pitch attitude on the climb out would look like. Look how high that nose is. Look at that pitch attitude. Look at the speed. There's the stall warning, and all we got to do is just lower the nose. So students often think that these stalls, you know, before they do them are kind of scary and they can be if you present it improperly, but what we like to show you folks is that if you know what normal looks like, it's really easy to avoid abnormal, right? You just have to know what the indications are to stay safe. Stalls are fun. <laughs> traffic, Cessna 152 CH, Julia, turn left crosswind, runway 31, Fernandina traffic. All right, so I'm going to be coming into Fernandina traffic, uh, Fernandina here. I'm going to plan on landing uh, runway 31 since we already got the uh, AWOS there and the yeah, wind was right coming right out of 340. Left, so I'm going to uh, plan on entering the, uh, the downwind for runway 31. Um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to just be turning in there at about a 45 degree angle. So I'm setting myself up right now to uh, approach from almost directly to the uh, directly to the south. And one of the things also that can help uh, uh, you folks that are new to traffic pattern entry get oriented, if you've got an airplane like this one that has a heading bug. Set your landing runway heading with the heading bug. Or if you don't have that, just look at your heading indicator, look out the window, and try and find the runway that's pointed in that same direction. So right now I say, okay, heading of 310 degrees is more or less straight ahead right now. So if I'm looking out at the airport, if you can see it in the video, it's right over there. I'm trying to find the runway, and you'll, those of you who fly with me will see me do this. I talk with my hands. I'm looking for the runway that's going that way. Right? And I found it. So now, once I've established that, I can fly where I need to be. I can then uh, look out on that 45 degree angle and maybe find an object in the distance that more or less approximates a 45 degree angle to that runway. So right ahead, I'm looking at that little patch of houses, maybe. I know you probably see a bunch of patch of houses in front of the video, but, but I have one in particular I'm looking at that's approximately at a 45 degree angle, so that can help me stay oriented to where I need to go. All right, folks, so there's our little landmark grouping of houses that we've identified. There's the airport. So we're kind of maneuvering to set ourselves up for a 45 degree entry for the downwind. And you'll hear folks go on and on and on on CTAP saying um, approximately 4.3 miles to the southeast, planning a teardrop, blah, blah, blah. All you got to say is Bernadina Beach traffic, Cessna 909 or 725, three miles south, landing runway 31. And you do the correct entry. Perfect. So we're beginning our final descent to pattern altitude. We're now about, I don't know, two, three miles south of the field. So this is perfect here. This gives us enough space to really check out what's going on in the traffic pattern to align ourselves properly for the entry. Avoiding the bird there. Yeah. <laughs> yep, avoiding a bird strike is always a top priority. Especially right. when you're in a marine it's environment like ours and so there's lots of birds down low. Five miles to the southwest this looks like about a 45 degree angle to runway 31 to me. Downwind for runway 29, Keystone. So our fellow uh, Pilot uh, is in, but is behind us right now in 152 Sierra Juliet, practicing a maneuver. So I'm going to extend my downwind here, but I'm going to deploy some flaps 
and do a little slow flight on the downwind here. So I don't get too far away from the airport while I'm waiting for my friend to execute his maneuver. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 909725 extending the downwind runway 31. Fernandina. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 152, uh, 152 Sierra Juliet, simulated power off 180, runway 31, turning base to final, runway 31. Uh, Fernandina traffic. And I have him in sight now. But notice how I've got the airplane trimmed for hands off level flight at uh, 70 knots. It's not falling out of the sky. It's better than doing 90 on the downwind because that gives me. Um, the ability to stay a little closer to the airport. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 909725 turning left base, 31, full stop, Fernandina. I'm just going to hang out exactly in this configuration. I don't feel the Fernandina need to traffic. change Cessna anything right now. Short final, runway I'll try a short Fernandina field traffic. landing as well. I'm just going to hang out here while I uh, get my fellow pilot in sight once again. And I see him, he's on short final now. He is turning right cross on runway 29, he's Again, I like to emphasize hands off trim in the pattern. See folks too often, they're fighting it a lot. Notice how the plane, if you just set it up to do what you want it to do, your job is going to be a lot easier. All right, there's somebody holding short of runway 31, so I'm going to make another call here. I'm going to start my descent. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power to idle right now, just because... I like coming in at idle. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 909725 turning final runway 31, Fernandina. Houston traffic, Cessna 301, Gulf Whiskey, right down one runway 29. So I've Houston. got it trimmed now for about 65-ish. My glide path right now looks pretty good to me. Fernandina Beach traffic, uh, Cessna 152, CO Juliet on the upwind. Now to do a real short field landing like Damien did, I'm going to go ahead uh, now and put in full flaps. That'll help me. Slow this thing down just a little more. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 909-725, short final, 31, Fernandina. And even right now, I've got it trimmed hands off. Feeling like this is okay right now. I know I could do a little slip if I need to, but I kind of kind of liking how this is looking right now, so I'm just going to leave it alone. South to north, thousand feet above the beach. There we go. There's my numbers. Gonna be patient here. Gonna be patient. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. And with no braking, I'm going to re reach taxi speed before the end of my pretend runway, which is the intersection right here. So, cool. And I'm going to check both ways here, make sure nobody's coming on either of those crossing runways so I can make the right turn onto this runway and then an immediate right onto taxiway Bravo, which will take me back to my runway. Indy Beach traffic, Bonanza 353 Delta Roman taking runway 31 for departure for Indy Beach. Downwind, uh, 3-1, Fernandina. Hello. So I'm just waiting for this guy that landed to make like he's clearing the runway. I'm trying to get a beat on the guy that just announced he's joining the left downwind, and I'm checking the base and final for any other random people who may not have announced. Because Fernandina's a non-towered field. Okay, a guy that just landed is clearing the runway. The final looks clear, the base looks clear, so I'm going to go. Fernandina traffic, go. Zero 500 zero to Sierra, clear runway 31. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 909725, departing runway 31, will be departing to the south, Fernandina Beach. Fernandina Cessna 015 is crossing runway 6. Nine two seven. There's the guy that's on the downwind now, so we're cool. Fernandina Beach traffic, Cessna 152 Sierra Juliet is about six miles south of the field, 2,500 feet, maneuvering over the beach. Fernandina Air traffic. All right. All right, engine pressures and temps looks good. Airspeed's coming alive, holding some back pressure on the oak. We're just going to let her fly when she's ready. Right about there. 
still looks good. If anything were to go south right now, I know I can still land straight ahead or perhaps make a shallow turn left or right to land on some available portion of this airport property. Pitching for my best rate of climb. Fernandina 7923, left base 31, Fernandina. So here at 300 feet is where my options are a bit more limited. This is kind of the vulnerable zone where we're forced to land on something straight ahead. And Damien, maybe you can just pan what is available straight ahead. Not a whole lot. There's some marsh. There's really not any good roads. There's a little bridge, which I wouldn't attempt to go for. Some birds out here we got to watch out for. So the best thing you could do in this case, if you had to land on that marsh, would be to Get in your full flap, slow it down as much as you could, and just keep it under control. You want to fly it onto your surface, no matter what that surface is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce my power here and level off at 2,000. Notice how when I'm trimming, I'm using just fingertips. I'm setting the pitch attitude for what I know it should look like. And I'm just using little gentle nudges on the trim, if you will, to hold it. I'm not driving the nose up and down with the trim wheel. I'm just doing little, little bits until it's not fighting me anymore and it's more or less hanging out where I want it. Traffic 238 crossing 927. All right, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and just monitor Craig Tower now, just kind of mentally get myself prepped for our arrival at Craig, even though we're not quite ready to do that just yet. I'm near a landmark uh, that I know is a good entry point to start thinking about heading back toward Craig. So it's over here where we're going to do a little clearing of the area before we do our maneuver. I see on the screen there's some traffic. If you want to show the screen so they can see somebody 400 feet above us. Um, off to our left, looks like they may be coming this way. And in fact, I see that target right now. What can I do for you? I'm going to make a clearing turn here to the left, which will probably help that person see me. Because a target that's kind of stagnant in motion may be a little more difficult to see. See, now it looks like he's turning away. He may have just seen me turn. Looks like he's doing circles or something. Doing some play maneuvering of his own. So we'll stay out of each other's way. I'm going to head back toward my bridge here and just keep an eye on that guy. Affirmative. Test one one eight one zero. Craig, I done. I done. Lear four. Correction. Lear one. Lima Julia. Contact departure one two four point nine. Going departure. We'll see you. Test five nine echo ground point eight. That may be Dominic practicing chandelles, actually. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. That's exactly what it is. All right. Good on him. Short final. There'll be one departure between you and him. All right. So here's what I want to show you, folks. Let me just turn the volume down on this radio a little bit. So when uh, Damien was demonstrating the um, the stalls earlier, right? That's so you could see what the pitch attitude is. Um, that's incorrect that you want to try and avoid. So what I'm going to show you now is the pitch attitude you want to achieve if your engine should fail you after departure. So similar to that power on stall demonstration, I'm going to set myself up for just a normal climate VY. And then I'm going to pull my throttle to idle and you're going to see me lower the nose to keep that airspeed. And Damien, what you can do with the camera is try and get a view out the window, but if you can also get the airspeed indicator as well, that would be great. So kind of just something over here. All right, so we've cleared the area. I'm just going to give a little peek left and right, make sure nobody's around. I think I've got, yeah, plenty of room with the clouds here. So I'm just going to reduce my power slightly, slow down to around 70, similar to what Damien did. I'm just going to pretend to take off. All right, so there's my BY. So I'm just going to... Go to full power here and just hold that BY pitch attitude. So this is what it would look and feel like again after takeoff, just normal, happy, everyday climb. And to be nice to my engine, I'm going to turn on my carburetor heat here as I reduce my power to idle to simulate the engine quitting. I have to lower that nose right about there. 
Okay, and that's going to give me my best glide. Very close to it. Okay, let's try that again because this is important, but you have to be triggered to lower that nose. So there's approximately VY, and this time I'm going to delay lowering the nose intentionally just to show you how quickly that speed bleeds off. I'm not going to let it stall. All right, but if someone panics, right, and they hold that nose back, look at that airspeed. Look how quickly it bleeds off. And you're like, oh my gosh, right? You got to get that nose down so you don't get too slow and stall it in trying to maneuver uh, for a safe place to land. Okay.